it says I'm live. Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Becky Thompson from Power Tools with Thread, and I took over the All Brands show today. I hope you got a chance to join us live. And if not, thank you so much for watching the replay. I can't wait to get started. Today, we're going to do something very cool. I'm going to show you how to turn a paper pattern into an embroidery applique pattern. Well, we're going to applique, okay? But I'm going to take a pattern that wants you to do uh, handwriting, hand stitching to mimic handwriting. And we're going to use the Brother Luminaire to mimic that. I'm going to show you how to do it so you don't have to hand stitch at all. Are you ready to go? Let's get started. entry. That is so cool. It's great to see all of you here in the chat. Oh my goodness. We're going to have so much fun. So if you don't know me or haven't heard of my channel, my name is Becky Thompson and I have the YouTube channel Power Tools with Thread, just like my shirt says right here. And I am a huge fan of all brands. And if you've ever been at the Houston Quilt Festival for the last four in-person years, uh, they had me on the brother stage doing some demos for you guys. And I've got a channel on YouTube. I am live every day, Monday through Friday uh, from 7 to 8 a.m. Central. And we do a live stitching retreat. You never know what's going to happen on my channel. We might cut, we might stitch, we might scan and cut. You have no idea what we're going to do, but we have a lot of fun doing it. So if you have never been around to see that, please pop in and you can always catch the replay as well. So I'm on this huge kick right now because I am a ginormous fan of Nancy Halverson's patterns. She has the company Art to Heart and she's got this pattern line called On Wander Lane. If you've heard about it or you've seen it, let me know in the chat if you've seen or are familiar with the On Wander Lane you can leave a comment below. So this is the one for March that's coming up. And I absolutely think this is just the most adorable uh, patterns. I, they're just so whimsy and fun. And all of the patterns include, you have a pot holder that's pieced, but there's a lot of applique in these. So I've got, there's a little pillow, uh, there's a mini quilt, We've got a larger pillow, there's a table topper, and then there's a large 30 inch wall hanging. And in the middle of each wall hanging is a large square, the large center block that's unfinished at 12 and a half. And it has a little neighborhood scene on it. There's a different one for each month. And at the end of the year, you can actually take just these center squares and make the beautiful quilt called On Wander Lane. So here it is right here on Wander Lane. This is the line. So this is Marches and it's called on Shamrock or it's called Shamrock Ridge. Well, I wanted to make this cute little, I'm going to make it into a wall hanging, a little mini quilt. Okay. Isn't that adorable? And see, it says lucky you, E-W-E, lucky you. These are so, so cute. So if you've never uh, seen my channel before, one of the things that I love to do is I love to use the Brothers Scan and Cut to scan in a paper pattern, get that file from the, the, the pattern into the Scan and Cut, 
Then I use the Scana Cut to make the pieces for the applique. I'm going to let the machine cut it out so I don't have to. These old arthritic fingers, I don't have to worry about that. And then what I do is I will import that file, that digital file that the Scana Cut created into embroidery software. And in that software, I will, with the click of a couple of buttons, turn it into an applique embroidery design. So I no longer have to put applique on the domestic and go stitch, stitch, stop, turn, stitch, stop, all of that. I don't have to do any of that. And it's very low tech. I promise it's low tech. I use very simple software to do this. And um, so if you're interested in learning how that process is done, be sure to check out my channel, Power Tools with Thread. But, okay, so what I want to do today is I want to cut out my applique pieces for the little, uh, the little mini quilt. And then I want to make sure that I can get the stitching for Lucky You. And also, here's a bigger one, this pillow right here. See the stem on the clover leaf? Okay, we need to get the stem as well. So this large pillow right here, we're going to make it real small. And we're going to make that one right there. But I'm going to do the whole thing in the embroidery machine. So it's very cool. I want to show you how that is done. All right. So, oh, hi, Etta. Etta's here. Aloha. Yes. <laughs> Great to see you. Etta and I were just on Sew and Sale 13. We had a ball. That was a scan and cut master class. That was a lot of fun. So it's great to see you. All right. It's all right. So the first thing I want to do is cut out those applique pieces. So be, before we all got started and whatnot, I have a scanning mat for the Brother Scan and Cut. My Scan and Cut is the SDX325, got it from All Brands. And then this is a scanning mat. The scanning mat does not have any sticky on it at all. It just has a clear flap. And if you're ever going to be doing this process, I really recommend that you get one of these. It keeps out all the dust, fur, thread, whatever. But more than that, when you get to where you're doing a lot of cuts, you're going to have a lot of marks on your cut mat. Well, the Scan and Cut has such good optical resolution, it will pick up all of those little marks and cuts and whatnot when you're trying to scan a paper pattern and it's a hot mess trying to clean up. So it's just makes your life so much easier to do a clean scan using a scanning mat. So this pattern right here, here's all the pieces for the sheep, the heart, the head, the clover, his little legs and whatnot. Okay. And you just pop it up under here and run it through the scan and cut. Now I have already done that and I sent it up to brother canvas where I had to clean up the map from there, but it was a much simpler process because in addition to picking up the pieces for the sheep that I want, of course, it also picked up everything else that it saw on the page, which is no big deal. I just pulled those off the mat, deleted everything else, brought them back on, flipped them be to mirror them because I'm going to cut pretty side up on my fabric. And now I'm ready to get those pieces cut out. So let me show you how we're going to do that. I have got my fabric already. It has heat and bond light on the back. I had done... So here's the little clover. Here's his hat. Here's his hat band. I had chosen this red, but I thought that it needed a little bit better splash of color. So I opted for this one instead. And then here's the black for his feet, face and tail. And here is the body of the sheep. Now, a little tip that's very handy because this is white and it's going to go on and over darker fabrics. I went ahead and backed that white fabric with some SF 101 first. That's a single sided fusible and it made the white fabric a little more opaque. So that's all good. And then then I put it on the heat and bond light. OK, so let me show you what I did here. I'm going to 
turn you here to take a look at my scan and cut and you can see uh my huge stash over there <laughs> i'm going to scan in uh scroll you in just a little bit here so you can take a look at the screen and let me move this there we go so you can see it better excellent okay all right, so on the scan and cut, you have two icons right here. You have pattern and scan. And pattern is patterns that were in the machine when you bought when you bought it. And then scan is a scanning feature. We will use that when we go to scan in the fabric. Okay. And then, but right now, what I want to do is uh, retrieve data. I'm sorry, this one right here, this scan I used when I scanned in the paper pattern. So I want to retrieve data because I sent the pieces down from the Brother Canvas and I'm going to get them from the cloud. Okay, and it's going to pull it right up. And here it is. Let me get you in close so you can see a little bit better. There we go. So you can see the clover, the hat, the hat band, the heart. Here's the black fabric and there is the white fabric. Okay. So that gives you an idea of what I'm going to be doing so that I can get my pieces cut out and that way I don't have to fiddle with it. I just, I, it will look like a four-year-old did it if it's up to me. Hold on. So the first thing I want to do, I'm going to put my fabric approximately where I think it ought to go on the screen just to kind of give me an idea. So the hat band is uh, right about here. All right, and my little hat is right here. And my shamrock, that is up here in this corner. This is just so easy, so quick and easy. All right, here's my, oh, my heart. I'm gonna put that like right there. And then the, my black fabric. It's going to go down here on this side, and it's really nice that um, you can even use your fabrics that have got your selvage on there. Go ahead and use that as an extra little uh, fabric space to help anchor your fabrics to your mat. You put good use to those, to those selvages, and then... All right, so I'm using the low tack mat. This is the aqua mat. It's low tack. I've got substrate side down. So the heat and bond side is down. Pretty side is up. And what's on the back is heat and bond light. Okay, so I'm going to load my mat. And just going to hit the load button right here. All right, right here in the middle of this screen, let me get you in close. This blue button right here. Whoop. Let me get you up there. How do you keep heat and bond from adhering to the mat? So the heat and bond is on very, very well. And um, yeah, you also have to, I'm using the low tack mat so that it's not super sticky. OK, if you use the purple mat, you run the risk of a hot mess, just like you described there. So you just kind of got to watch that. So here's where the scan and cut makes its money is that blue box right there with the bar across it. That is the scanning button. I'm going to touch it and just hit start. And it's going to pull the mat in. You can take a look at that. It's going to pull the mat in and take a picture of what it sees on the mat. So, my goodness, it's great to see everybody here. I see lots of folks from my morning situation room. Hi, Donna, good to see you. Lots of folks there. All right, so here, it's kind of hard now to see where the pieces are. I can see it on the white. So I got that one right, but here it's really hard to see where all the rest of the pieces are actually fitting because the fabric is dark. The fabric is a dark background. So to fix that, I'm going to touch the wrench 
and I'm going to change it to a light background and tell it OK. And now I can see exactly where the pieces are in relation to the fabric. So I know that I can move them. This is why the scan and cut is superior to all other cutting machines, because it lets you take a picture of everything so that you can absolutely make sure that it's going to cut in the right spot. OK, let me move his little tail just a little further. That's good. OK, I think that's going to work fine. I'm going to tell it OK. Let me make sure that this is centered good enough. I think that's I think that's fine. Tell it OK and select and cut and start. All right. So it's going to do it all for me. Love it. So it's going to come over. It takes. Um, Yes, cutting applique is so much easier with a scan and cut. Absolutely. What's the matter? Why are you doing that? It might have thought it had a piece move up. Let me do this. Make sure. Let me tell it start. Did I have a piece lift? Yeah, my mat might not be sticky enough. Get this. Let it do its thing there. A lot of times it depends on the humidity in your area, how sticky your mats remain for how long, how much you use them. That's working out really good right there. I love it, love it, love it. So if you're interested in um, having uh, tutorials, baby step tutorials on this process. I have nearly 800 videos on YouTube and where I show uh, this process over and over. I have a full playlist for scan and cut and another full playlist for doing this applique process. So here we go. Let's take a look. Ah, look at that. It's perfect. How nice not to have to cut these out myself. Isn't that nice? Love it, love it, love it. Got a little bit of a thread caught on that one. And that's because that's because I have SF 101 on this as well. But I can see the line where it meant to cut. And I'll just it just didn't get through it because I'm using a, a thicker the fabric is thicker than the regular quilting cotton because of the SF 101. That happens, not a big deal. There we go, perfect. All right, so now I can just get these up. I'm gonna use my little spatula to get these up. You don't want to pull them so they stretch. I gotta be really careful not to stretch them. Okay, perfect, look at that. There's all my pieces, how nice. I'm going to eject my mat, and we are done with the scan and cut. Perfect. All right. Don't you love this cabinet? My husband made that for me. <laughs> okay. So now that I've got my pieces, I want to go ahead and get these embroidered down because don't forget, let me give you a big picture of what we're doing. We're going to make this guy right here. Lucky you. So what I'm going to be doing is appliquing this down right here, and then I'm going to use the Luminaire scanner feature to bring in the stem and the lettering, okay? So if you have a Luminaire, you can also do this with the Stellaire using your camera and sending it over to the Stellaire. That also works, okay? So let me explain what I got going on here. I have got, this is the Luminaire XP1 that has been upgraded to the XP3. This is Darla. Darla and I are very close. And I am using uh, dime pre-wound bobbins. I love these. They work great. Okay. You get them by the tube. They have these at all brands. And then also I am using 
isocord thread up in the top. And I also get my thread from all brands. I got Darla from all brands. Okay. And my scan and cut. Well, they've got an all brand San Antonio. So they are my brother dealer and that's where I get it all. Okay. Uh, I am going to, um, first I want to so we're going to use the add feature to add in multiple designs. And we are also going to use the scanning feature with design center to go ahead and mimic uh, the, the hand stitching. Let me see. Can you do it with the PR 10 needle? If it has a camera and design center in it, Jean, yes, you can. Okay. That's it. If it's got this, the, it needs to have the camera. Okay. Alrighty. So let's, let's get to this. I have hooped. I have a six by 10 dime magnetic hoop. Okay. I've got fabric in there for my background fabric. I've got a piece of batting, little thin batting that I like to use in wall hangings and a piece of no show mesh stabilizer in my magnetic hoop. Okay. All right. So let me pop this in here. And the first thing I want to do is to bring up the embroidery design. As I said, when I started the video, I took the digital file that was created by the scan and cut and popped it into my embroidery software and created the applique design. I'm not going to show how to do that here because that's a whole nother hour long lesson. Uh, but if you want to see that, I have lots and lots of examples of it on my channel, Power Tools with Thread on YouTube. And I also have a blog, PowerToolsWithThread.com. So I did create the embroidery design using the file from the Scan and Cut. And I'm going to go into embroidery on the Luminaire and I'm going to bring it up. It's in memory. And I sent it over wirelessly. I use Embrilliance embroidery software. Okay. And I, so I'm going to hit the wireless button and go down here. And here's my sheep right here. Let me hit set. Let me get you in closer so you can see my little sheep. Awesome. There he is. Okay. He's a little sideways. What inflation rate did I use in Embrilliance to create the cut file? Betsy wants to know. I used a 1.0 millimeter. So I need to do some rotation here. I'm going to hit the edit button and rotate and 90. There he is. Now he's straight up. Okay. Now I want to get the pattern in for the stem and the words. All right. Let me do this. We're going to do a little hopping around on uh, the needle plus minus button to get this all right. And the reason is, is because that stem, I want it actually to stitch underneath the nose. Okay. So that's in the middle of the sheep design. We are going to hop around. All right. So I'm going to put this right here. Now, I'm going to scan on this. Now, the Luminaire does not care if you use the scanning mat or not, just so long as you have something in here for it to move around. That's all it cares about. All right. So let's go into Design Center. Let me show you what I'm going to do. Back up just a little bit so you can see all the buttons. Okay, there we go. So what I'm going to do now is tell it okay. Now I want to go to Add. Where do I want to get the design from? So I'm going to touch this button right here that says my design center. Can you, let me see if you can see that. There it is right there. Okay. Now in my design center, I want to scan in this picture from the paper pattern. So I'm going to touch the leaf up here, which is the scanning. And I'm going to choose line design and scan and it says it's going to scan keep your hands out of the way i'm gonna tell it okay so here it goes so now it's going to take a quick pass the camera is right under here okay right right under where that light is and so it's taking a quick picture of what it sees ah <laughs> 
<laughs> my videos are a lifesaver at one in the morning. <laughs> awesome. Well, all right. Well, here we go. This looks pretty good. So what it's wanting to know right now is it wants me to kind of minimize what it is that I'm going to be using. Okay. So I'm going to take this and just move this up. And this is so we can isolate what it's going to be digitizing. There we go. And I'm going to bring this down. And I want to capture the stem. Actually, I think I want to do the stem as its own design. So let me do the stem first because the stem is, I want to put the stem down before the lucky you. Okay, I'm going to bring this. Here's my stem. Okay, that looks good to me. I'm going to tell it okay. And I want to tell, are you sure this is what you want? I'm going to tell it set. All right. Now I'm going to make it a little bit larger and right up. Just want to get up here where you guys can see all the buttons. There's a percent right up there. I want to go to 200 and the pan my finger and move it over. So I've got some working room and then I'm going to use the eraser. And I like to make my eraser go to about like 35 or so. And I like to use the square. It just is easier for me to do that. I can have better control, I feel like. So I'll get you in here so you can see. What I'm trying to do is just capture the stem. So that's my eraser. Now I'm going to take the stylus that came with the machine and I'm going to erase everything except the stem. Let me see. I got that. Okay. Yeah. And I'm going to erase this. And if I erase over it a little bit, that's okay. Cause I'm going to redraw it. Now I want to extend that stem just a tiny bit so that I can make sure the ends of the stem go underneath each side of the nose. Um, I did, I did mirror it, uh, Petful Mom. I did. I mirrored it in Brother Campus when I sent it down. Okay. And if you notice here, I've got a little bit of the stem that has a break in it. I don't want that. I'm going to erase that and just get rid of that. So now I'm going to take my, actually, just to make it a little bit easier, I could just erase this whole thing since it's just kind of a straight line. Now I'm just going to hit my pencil and I want to redraw that stem. And that I'm a terrible drawer. See that? So that's why I like to use that. I'm going to go backwards and go backwards and I'll bring my stem back. <laughs> now I like to start kind of out. Oops. Outside of it and draw it in. That's terrible. I need the smaller stylus. I'm having a terrible time with this, you guys. Hold on. I'm just going to erase this and I'll try it with this one. My pencil. Yesterday when I practiced this, it was perfect. There we go. I don't like that one. That's the nice thing. You can, you have an undo button. Okay, there we go. So now the stem extends just a little bit under the nose for either side and then it also extends under the shamrock all right so that's good i'm going to tell it okay good enough for government work that's what i say you guys okay can i zoom in yeah i'll get in a little closer i just want you to be able to see the buttons though too because here we go so now i need to digitize this okay so i'm going to tell it next so you can't see the next. Now you need to see the buttons. Okay, so I'm going to tell it next. What you want to do is right here, this is a stitch um, height. And I want it, it's at 0 0.080. I'm going to, and you can tell only one, let me get in close. Only one piece of that has a red box around it. See that? And the other one does not. 
So it sees it as two se separate objects. So what I want to do, let me back out here a little bit, is you there's a chain link right here. And you want to touch the chain link. And when you do that, it selects everything on the screen. See? Okay. I'm just, I'm backing out so you guys can see these buttons. So I'm going to touch this now that they're both selected and go down to as far as it will let me go, which is 0 0.040 and tell it okay. And now I'm going to hit set and it's converted to an embroidery pattern. Okay. And my design center will be exited. I'm going to tell it okay. All right. So there's the stem for the shamrock. I'm going to do the scanning again to get the lettering in. Okay. So I'm going to hit the add button and I'm going to go to design center, just like we did before line design to scan and tell it to scan and tell it. Okay. So now it's going to take a picture again and get the letters for me. Okay. Close enough for prime time. Y'all, I'm a, I'm, I'm a one man shop here, y'all. I don't have a camera crew or a production scene or anything. You're just here with me and my camera. So, yeah, if you've been thinking about getting a luminaire and this makes it all worthwhile, especially if you like doing these kinds of projects. So let's do this again. I'm going to isolate. Uh oh, I don't like that. You guys, I'm going to cancel. I need to move this over. I need to move my paper over just a little bit. It kind of cut off the letters. So let's scan it one more time. It was kind of chopped off and I don't want that. So um, thank you, Julianne. Yeah, Julianne's in my um, situation room in the mornings. She's a regular there. <laughs> Thank you, Denise. I appreciate that. You do what you can, right? Barbara, she's a slave driver, you guys. All right. This is much better scan. So now I'm just going to pull this up and I want to isolate the lucky you. Let me get you in. Whoop, wrong direction. So you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to pull this in like this. I want to get the top of the K. That's pretty good. I don't want any of that green. Okay. Get that out. My dog's fixing a bark, you guys. I hear Amazon. Sorry about that. I'm going to tell it okay. Now I've got a little bit of stuff on there that I don't want, but that's what the eraser is for. Okay. Ellen, I don't know if there's a giveaway today or not. I don't know. Barbara did not tell me that. I'm going to hit set. And now I need to get my eraser. I need to go much larger. I'm going to uh, blow it up to 200 and pan and grab. All right, now let's erase. And I got a little bit right there. All right, that looks good. That's it. That's all I needed to do to digitize this handwriting. So... <laughs> Frida, I don't know where she's, I think, I don't know where she's at right now. I hope she's not in here. So I'm just going to tell it, okay? All right. So you guys are seeing up close. Let me go back out so you guys can see the buttons. And I'm going to tell it next. Wait, let me get down just a little bit. Tell it next. And again, just like the stem, see how thick that is right there? I need to... Touch the chain link. It sees lucky and you as two separate objects. So I'm going to touch that. So they're both selected. Let me get in there. Whenever you have something like that, see how there's a red box around both of them. Now look at that. There's something right there that will stitch. Okay. I don't want that. So let me undo my chain link and let me uh, go back and hit my eraser. Okay. That's a good way to know 
If you have something show up red that shouldn't, you can say, uh oh, I got something that doesn't belong there. I need to get real big, you guys. There's a. Yes, there it is. I saw it. Perfect. Okay. That looks great. Tell it next. And chain link to select everything. Make everything small as it will go on the zigzag width. Tell it okay. And it's done. I'm going to tell it set. And okay. So now that is also an embroidery file. We are in embroidery mode now. So the first one is the sheep, the second one is the stem, and the third one is the lettering. And you can uh, cycle between these with these arrow keys right down here at the bottom of the screen. So let's, uh, lucky you is selected. Let me uh, move that down. I'm gonna go into edit and I'm gonna hit rotate because that does everything. I'm just gonna move that down and bounce it over just a little bit, get it off my applique. All righty. And then I'm going to hit the arrow key. Could I have used the triple stitch instead of the statin stitch? I could have, but I like how clean this looks on this particular, um, when I do this method. Okay, and then here I need to move... Let's see what I've got. That is the, the sheep is selected and there is the stem. So let me go down with my stem. I'm going to move this over just a little bit. So it is under the nose and I'm going to, I'm looking to put the tip of that stem right in the V of the shamrock there, the clover leaf. That looks good. Let me get you in and take a look. So look at this. All right. That looks like that's going to stitch just perfect. How cool is that? And I don't have to do that. Right? Awesome. I don't have to do that by hand. I love that. So we're ready to go, you guys. All right. I'm going to tell it okay. And embroidery. Let me get this paper out of here. And we are set to go. Now, when I change my threads, my favorite trick is to cut the thread up here and put my new thread on. And then I just tie these into a single knot, just one little loop knot like that. And pull it through. I'm using an organ. Hold on, my tension discs are closed. There they go. I'm using an organ 7511 EBBR. That's for embroidery. And brother machines are timed at the factory with organ needles. So if you are having thread shredding problems and you're not using an organ needle, you might switch to that and see if that doesn't solve your problem. Okay. So we're ready to go. Um, I'm just going to hit start and it's going to stitch out the placement line for the, um, the body. Oh, no, it's not. Becky, you need to thread your needle. <laughs> Anybody else do that? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's magic. Okay. Almost had a little ghost sewing going on there, didn't I? Okay. So there is the placement line for my little legs. And y'all, I completely forgot to turn on my mini iron here. So I'm going to uh, step in front of the camera just for a second while this thing heats up. And we're going to do it over here on my big ironing station. I won't leave you guys. 
you can see where I was cutting fabric like crazy there. Normally I've got my little Cricut mini iron all heated up and ready to go. So let me uh, get you over here. You can just watch me put this. I'm just going to iron this little piece on. It fits perfectly because the digital file that the scan and cut made that was for the piece to cut it out is also the same And they are absolutely guaranteed to fit. There we go. Sometimes when you've got little legs like this, see how that fits just fine on there. There's my little sheep feet, They're little legs. Okay. So now it's going to stitch the, I'm using an E stitch instead of a blanket stitch, so it looks like a little E, and I'm gonna let it do that and stitch that on. got questions I can answer. Looks like a little pair of pants. Yes, it does. <laughs> can you do this with your upgraded Stellaire? Um, yes, you can. Do I have a recommendation? Which scan and cut will give you the best bang for the price? Lana Dean. So I would tell you, um, I need to do a thread color change to, oh no, this is black for the tail as well. So I recommend buying the most scan and cut that you can afford. Okay, so all scan and cuts, scan and cut the same, but there is a difference in their ability uh, based on like which mat they can scan. For instance, if you like doing uh, like an applique quilt and you're going to do a whole bunch of different pieces, if you get something below the 325, it can't scan a 24 inch mat. It can cut on it. The other ones like the 125 or the 85 can cut on it, but it can't scan it. So if you've got a big 24 inch mat because you have a load of applique, you can't really use that. So let me get this on here, but you may also want Disney. If Disney is in your life right now, if you've got somebody who's a fanatic for princesses and that type of thing, then you might want a Disney scan and cut and that will have a D in the number, like the 330D, okay? DX models uh, all have Wi-Fi. All of the DX models have Wi-Fi, so that's really nice. So I didn't need to cut the applique a bit larger. Uh, Cheryl, I cut the applique one millimeter larger than the pattern just to make sure it got caught. We're stitching down the little E stitch. Can I use steam -a seam instead of heat and bond light? Yes. I have successfully used steam -a seam but you've got to use, um, don't use the featherweight. I, I just got a bolt of the featherweight from Heat and Bond. Um, people are telling me that it's not that successful. Here's our body for our sheep. So I need a thread color change. And I've got it right here. And y'all, this process is so much fun when you get to do an applique and, you know, it, it really blends, uh, bridges the gap between quilting, quilting and embroidery. I'm also a quilter and I love doing applique quilts. And I just, um, I wanted to find a way to be able to automate this process because there's so much more that we can do and the time involved. So, hi, Anne. Great to see you. Uh, 
All right, so there is our body for the sheep. And again, I have got SF101. Oh, Deb, I'm looking forward to seeing you too. That'll be great. I will be at Bozier City. Absolutely. That's what I'll be there. Let me turn you so I'm not leaving you all by yourselves while I'm over here. Stitching this out, ironing these down. So I've got SF 101 on the back of this piece to make it more opaque. So you didn't see the black legs or the tail through the body of the fabric. And y'all look how fast this is. Isn't that cute? Look at that. This is so fast where you get the scan and cut to cut out your pieces. And then you get the luminaire to just stitch it all down. It's amazing. So yeah, they, they no longer make the 230, uh, the 225. They don't make those anymore. So uh, the three, I have the SDX 325. I love that machine. It does everything that I need it to. It's identical in all of its stuff it does to the 330D, except it doesn't have Disney. So I, you know, my grands are past the age of Disney, so I didn't need it. Yeah. This is awesome. Look at that thing just go. I'm working so hard <laughs> to stitch this out. No show mess stabilizer is there right and wrong side. You notice one side is smoother. Hmm. Let me see. All right. What do we have to do now? It is time to put down the head of the sheep. But before we do that, I want to stitch out the stem for the shamrock. And that's that was our first little scan, remember? So here's what we got to do. I'm going to do a thread color change to the green. Where did my green go for? Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm going to do a thread color change first. All right. Get that done. I've got that pretty bright green for the clover. All right, now I'm gonna go into the needle plus minus on the machine and we're gonna jump ahead in all the stitches and find that stem because it's got to go under the head. Okay, so let's do that. Needle plus minus, and I'm gonna jump ahead here. Whoop, yeah, you'll see it, let's see. There it is right there. Okay. And back out. All right. Why do I tie a knot with my thread? That's to pull it through the machine so I don't have to change threads all the time uh, manually. I don't have to rethread the machine the whole time. I just tie that knot and then I pull it through from the bottom. And that way uh, I don't have to thread the entire machine the whole time. Look at that. Look how nice of a stitch we're getting. See how small that is? Isn't that great? I love it. All right, let me back out here. Now we're going to go back and stitch down the little head of our shape. So I'm going to go back into needle plus minus and I'm going to go backwards. You just kind of got to pay attention when you do these things. Let's see. And I need to do a thread color change back to black. Whoop. I'm missing it. I can't see it. <laughs> 
So I tie the knot up above. This is just easier for me, you guys. You can do it either way. I do like to run my thread through the little thread guide at the top. That really is for bobbins, but it just keeps everything nice and clean and neat. Okay. Now our little head. Let's see if we did it. Ah, perfect, perfect, perfect. I love it. I want to show you what this looks like. The stem right under that nose, just exactly like I wanted it. So it will be covered by the nose. Isn't that cool? Love it. And we saw that on the... Um, on the screen when we digitize that piece of it. So I'm ironing my little head on over here. And put this. Oh, I've got a little bitty loop that I want to get rid of at the top there. I didn't like that. So you can just get a hold of it and ta da, gone. I like to keep all of my embroidery tools in a little tray. And I always throw everything back in here because if I don't, I'll spend five days looking for my embroidery scissors and waste a ton of time. Do you guys do that too? It's like you put them down and they grow legs. So I've kind of trained myself to put my stuff back every time, all my scissors and everything. I have to put it back every time. Oh my gosh, this is getting cuter after every piece. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It's adorable. And now we're going to stitch that blanket stitch to stitch it down. I can't. Oh, <laughs> yes, I did the um, was I able to do the stitching in brilliance? Yes, I certainly was. That's the I use in brilliance. Stitch artist Two allows you to with just a click of a couple of buttons, convert that that file into an applique design. It's amazing. It's so much fun. You can control the stitch length and width and all of that. All right, next is our little hat. I need a thread color change for my hat. I don't think we, we will use the black again, but uh, not until we get to the lettering. So it's just, you don't, I mean, it's just a single loop, like you, where you tie your shoes the first time, just a single loop, nothing fancy, just enough so it holds together to get through the machine. All right. And you still use Simply Applique and yes, Simply Applique is great software. If it's working for you, then great. I switch to a brilliant Stitch Artist 2 because it gives me a lot more power. Uh, it's much more robust software and allows me to uh, do what I need to get all the embroidery done. Oh, I got another little thing I need to trim here. Where did those go? I got a little tail. There we go. And stitch down, uh, iron on his hat. Okay. It's kind of hard to tell because I want to show you when we get done how close and perfect the embroidery is for the applique and the stitch down. That's right, a place for everything and everything it's in its place, exactly. Sometimes it's hard to keep up with it. <laughs> and the hat band. I'm gonna leave it the same thread color. We're getting real close to being finished here. I'm going to 
going to go ahead and do a thread color change and I will iron on his hat band. What are we doing? Oh, no, I'm not. I was going to, I forgot this is not not in the same thread color as the other piece. I can't, I can't hardly see where the placement line is for this because it's so much the same color. Same value of fabric here. All right, that's pretty close. That looks good. And then next, I think, is probably the heart, and then the shamrock, and then the lettering. So we're almost out of time here. I can go ahead and jump to the lettering, Barbara, if you want me to, because Barbara's in the background. But uh, we're going to do a little heart now. And I want to make sure that I've got the right color red because I changed. Uh, I think that's closer to it. I changed my fabric at the end, remember, because I decided that I wanted to do this pretty flower red instead of uh, the Christmas red that I had. And as long as we've got time, I'm going to keep going. Air threader surgers. Let's see. Oh, yeah. I've got a really good video on how to thread that air threader serger. Okay. I've got the Brother Airflow 3000. So the video should be around in the archives. Yeah, Beth, it should be. Okay, thank you, Barbara. I appreciate that. She says, take as much time as I need. This is so cute. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to iron on a little heart. Oh my gosh, y'all, I can't stand it. I absolutely love Nancy Halverson's designs. So stinking cute. And I actually wrote to her and asked her if it would be okay if I did this to show you guys how to do this because I wanted to bring uh, the embroidery world into uh, her show, you know, introduce her patterns to the embroidery world. And she was all for it. So I have permission from Nancy Halverson at Art to Heart to do this. So <laughs> place where everything means it's still in the house. You'd like to try to do the stem. Let me see. I think I missed that. And the words in a brilliance program since you don't have the luminaire. Yeah, Betsy, you can do that. Um, it would mean taking, so if you have the scan and cut, uh-oh. I don't want little red eyes. And that's my fault. I digitized that wrong. I put the eyes on the same um the same uh, design as the heart, and I didn't mean to. So uh, let me get a lighter gray for the eyes here. That's my fault. I meant to stop it. I didn't think it was going to go ahead and do it again, but it did. That's no problem. Cool thing about embroidery, it's very forgiving. But yeah, I wanted to introduce her pattern to embroiderers, and so you can find these in quilt stores all over the country. And then they also, if you are overseas, you can download them at arttoheart.com. Hi, Joanne. How are you? Great to see you. Joanne Banco from Let's Go Sew is here. All right, let's try this again. I'm going to back up. All right right there. It's very handy to be able to back up those stitches when you need it to, right? Oh 
Okay, now we're ready to do the clover leaf. So I need my green again. Now, if you've got a multi needle, uh, this is a whiz. You just have to put in your program in your stops so that uh, it stops and allows you to put the applique down. But it's much quicker. And let me do the placement line for my shamrock. Evil sheep. <laughs> Wouldn't I rather app you? <laughs> no, hell favor. You know I don't want to do that. She's also uh, regular on my situation room in the morning. She's giving me a hard time. <laughs> Let's iron on our little clover. Get that on there. Uh, this is uh, a Cricut mini iron. I love this thing. It's wonderful. And then I'm using a steady Betty as my ironing surface. And I'm going to clean up some of the little uh, threads I have here. I got a little bit of red in the eye. He might have a, a little pink eye or something going on, y'all. But I, I can cut that knot out and get that out. Yeah. All right, here we go. And here's our final blanket stitch on the shamrock. Yeah, I also love hand stitching. No, they know I don't do that. They know I don't like hand stitching. That's why I figured out how not to do hand stitching. Because I'm terrible at it. But I love to incorporate the technology that's out there for us into our embroidery designs. All right. So we're back to the, um, Barbara, I want to see that question again when I get done here. What what would you type? What, oh, what would you type in the search bar on YouTube to find about stitching applique? Uh, Trisha, type in... Um, Type in power tools with thread and applique or all brands and applique and, you know, we'll see. I don't know. I've got it all over my channel. So, all right. So this is the stem for uh, the clover that we just did. So I, I don't need to do that again. I'm going to jump ahead. I'm in the needle plus minus menu and I'm going to go to lucky you. And then that's going to be it. So I'm going to tell it okay. And, oh, I'm going to do a thread color change to black. Okay. Y'all, I got threads all over the top. That's another thing I love about the Luminaire that I didn't know I would love so much. The Luminaire, the lid on the Luminaire folds over flat like a little tray, and you can put your threads on it, and it's fantastic. Whoop. They don't, it doesn't do that on any other of their machines. So it's an extra little, hort, you know, flat surface here, which is so awesome. I put my applique pieces on there so they don't get lost. Glasses, scissors, you name it. Okay. Let's see what we got. All right. I've got a tail that I want to get rid of. I don't like leaving those because I don't want them stitched into, especially when you're doing lettering. If it ever has, you know, sometimes it'll leave a little loop or a tail. Go ahead and stick, uh, clip that right away. And that's going to prevent you from getting it sticking up or caught under stitches or anything like that. Yeah. <laughs> Can I do this in essentials? No, ma'am. You... So in order to create the embroidery design in, in Brilliance, you've got to do it in Stitch Artist 2. Stitch Artist 2 has the button that allows you to import the vector graphic from the scan and cut that the scan and cut created. So, but 
any pattern that you have, like I've done Lori Holt quilts, okay? Like say she's she's done um, Sunbonnet Sue and the Sunbonnet Sam, I guess it is. And Sam has his little fishing pole, you know how? And it has the fishing line that droops down. Well, she did that in B Vintage and it's got his fishing line. Well, you can just do the fishing line as well. You can scan in the paper pattern that she gives you in the design and let the luminaire, you know, digitize the stitching for you so you don't have to do that by hand. It's awesome. Oh my goodness, this is turning out adorable. I love it, I love it. I need to clean up the eyes just a little bit. So that will be a little finishing touch that I will do. I always make sure to go in and clip any jump stitches or anything like that. Sometimes it's those tiny little details that make all the difference uh, to, to make your design look really, really nice. And so, um, oh, thank you. I, th I appreciate that, Joanne. Let's see. Oh, thank you. PTWT Nation. Oh, she says 8 a.m. Eastern. Yeah, that's right. I do it at 7 a.m. Central. These, these folks are my power tools with thread, PTWT Nation, I call it. This is turning out just perfect, you guys, just perfect. I love it, I love it. So I have done many Lori Holt quilts using her simple shapes to convert those into embroidery designs. So if you are uh, a Lori Holt fan, that's a great way to do that. My sidekick, Valerie, completed all of um, B Vintage using the process that I show. So that was uh, pretty cool. I was very proud of her for doing that. Oh, we're done. We're done. And now my favorite sound. Yay. Okay. All right. So again, I've got a little bit of cleanup to do on the eyes. But look at this. Look how perfect the lettering turned out. Look at the stem. Look at the stitching on the body. Let me zoom in close. Let me get super close so you guys can see. I want you to see the detail. How perfect. Look at the heart. Okay. I do have to clean up those eyes. I'll do that. But check it out. I love it. I absolutely love this. Okay. I could not do this this well myself doing it on a domestic. And I get to use my embroidery machine and bring that into my love of quilting. And I've got this adorable little quilt. So now it looks just like that. Okay. There we go. How about that? And I'm ready to do my little mini quilt. Very, very cool. Awesome. Thank you, Betsy. You are so sweet. Yeah. So um, I don't know, Barbara, were you going to do, a, oh, she's going to do a $25 gift card. Awesome. You guys are doing hashtag all brands. And she's getting ready to do the draw on that. Are we ready to go, want to give everybody an extra second to do a hashtag all brands, all one word. So, um, oh, hi, Bonnie. There's my uh, rally manager, Bonnie Cohn. Yeah, we're going to be doing a rally. Uh, so together, RV, so together. So now, those of you that have an embroidery machine, you want to check out my channel, Power Tools with Thread on YouTube and see how I do all of this. So, all right, you guys, you ready to go? Barbara, go ahead and do it. Ready, set, go. Let's see who's going to win. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Who is it? Who is it? Kathy Webb. Yay. All right, Kathy, there's instructions below. Email events at allbrands.com with your name, number, and address to claim the $25 gift card. Congratulations, Kathy. That is awesome. You will love that. Get yourself some thread for your embroidery machine. You can get a bunch of spools for that. Yeah. 
So I want to thank Barbara so much for having me on today. This has been a lot of fun. Um, Darla does great. You can see how beautiful the Luminaire stitches. We did great work on the Scan and Cut. And um, I just had a blast. And I want to thank all of you for taking time out of your day to come here and spend it with me on the All Brands Show. So uh, if you get a chance, check out my channel, Power Tools with Thread on YouTube. Be part of our Stituation Room, 7 a.m. Central, every Monday through Friday. And um, I look forward to seeing you all again. All right. I'll see you tomorrow morning, my Sobies that are in here. Okay. We will talk to you soon. You guys go sew something. Bye. Mm -hmm.